The leaves in my backyard have already begun changing. The earth is great. So by the time that you're watching this, it is October, which means it is now socially acceptable to celebrate your spooky innards. To all those shoobies who believe that spooky time only belongs in October. <laughs> Technically this Friday, or when you're watching this, is going to be the first day of Maxoween. And so for this first look, I wanted to turn myself into... A pumpkin lady. For some reason, I have always been obsessed with the idea of like human with a pumpkin head. That may come from watching Sleepy Hollow way too early in my formative years. There's just something so whimsical about it. I feel like this is a chance for me to evolve into my final form on all levels except physical. I am a pumpkin. We're just gonna get to it. Yeah, get into it. Some of the inspiration behind this comes from Halloween Town and partly also over the garden wall. But for some reason, I've always had an image in my head where it's a lady with a pumpkin head and then just super hobbity autumn clothes with an apron. Some of us store useful information in my brain. Some of us, like myself, store images like that just tucked away. <laughs> now one of my favorite artists and friend of mine, her name is Brie, she actually did a similar costume to this. I approached her about it and we talked a little bit about materials and how she made hers. I can assure you I will be going back and asking her more questions during this whole process because yikes. Now before we do anything, I really do need to sit down and figure out exactly what I want to do in terms of design because like I said, it's tucked away in my little brain office up here. Let's just head over to design phase and figure that out. <laughs> okay, so obviously to start this pumpkin lady, we are going to need a pumpkin head. Okay, maybe not. Hello, thank you. I'm not quite sure what I want her face to look like yet. Whatever. <laughs> for the body, for the shirt, I'm thinking something almost 1800s looking. Of course, puffed sleeves. Any other kind of sleeve would just be boring. And then for the skirt, lots of volume, very swooshy, basic white apron, ruffles. So ruffles on the sleeves, ruffles on the sides. Hmm. She looks a little creepy now that I look at her. It's fine, it's fine, we'll make her cute, I swear. Now I'll be completely honest, a big reason why I want to do this is because I want to make more autumn -y clothes for myself. This month is going to be super crazy busy for me, so I really don't have time to sit down and make my own clothing. This project is an opportunity to do that, but also disguised as work. <laughs> Pretty much all of the pieces that I'm making for this, the shirt, the skirt, and the apron, I will be able to reuse and rewear, which is always the nice part about basically dressing in costume every day of your life. Now the head. Mm. I'm in the minority of people who really haven't done much paper mache in their life. Now my friend Bree said what she did, she took a garbage bag and filled it with newspaper to Start with the overall shape and then paper mache it over that. We will save that for tomorrow. And I think today I'm just gonna focus on some of the garments. So let's take a trip down to my fabric stash and figure out what kind of autumn -y goodness we will be making these items of clothing with. Fabric trip time. These are the fabrics that I got like a month ago and I didn't end up using for my autumn clothing. <laughs> Autumn clothes video. I think I'm going to use this for the shirt. And then, I actually just went thrifting the other day and I think this bed sheet, pretty perfect for the skirt. Yes, good. That still leaves what pattern I need to use. Back downstairs. All right, 
Oh God, just got this pattern. And I think that would be pretty perfect for the top. For the skirt, I think I might just be basic again and use this same pattern that you have seen me use quite a few times. I feel like there's only so many variations of a skirt pattern that you can do. I'm sure it's, whoa, squat much? If it ain't broke, keep using the same pattern over and over. That's what they say, right? And then for the apron, I think I'm just gonna kind of wing it. I could probably use the sleeves from this as a guideline for the ruffles. As always, I am going to start with the skirt because <laughs> it's the easiest and I like to do the easy things first and stress about the difficult things later. <laughs> <laughs> Party foul. Okay. Now obviously I need to wash and dry and iron this. Just autumn things. This should be relatively easy to work with since it's just nice cotton. Like I said, I have used this pattern quite a few times before. It's very, very simple. It is basically just one giant rectangle, a smaller giant rectangle. So I think I only cut out one of these because you place it on fold so it folds out. Two of these giant ones because this is technically the side and the back. <sighs> so let's do that. pattern pieces on top and all cut out. Floor is so squeaky. All I have to do is take off the paper. So this is the front piece. Unfold it. Big old rectangle. Okay, and then with the other sides, I can attach to the front of the skirt. Now what I have to do is sew everything I just pinned, gather at the top. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna check in. Okay, so what I just did, I took the end of the bed sheet, which had a folded over and sewn part already which makes my job easier. And then I stitched it on the outside. So that way, now we have the gathered skirt. I can flip this over and then tack it on the inside and you have a waistband. Ha -cha -cha -cha. Ha -cha -cha. Here is the skirt so far. In the back, I will have a button. I'm really excited about this. I was a little concerned that these little stripies would just really scream bedsheet and look really costumey. It's not that bad. You can't really even tell. And it's super freaking comfortable because it's a bedsheet. Next, I'm just gonna throw a button on this. I might as well just hem the bottom and just call the skirt done for today so I don't have to come back to it. And then tomorrow I can start on the bodice and the head. Honestly, knowing how easy this skirt pattern is to make, that took me like maybe two to three hours, makes me want to steal everyone's bed sheets and make myself skirts out of them. Put a button on and hem it. And if I don't check in, then I will see you tomorrow. So it is now day two. It is time to start work on the pumpkin head. 
and I am nervous. I watched approximately one tutorial on YouTube. Make sure it's a nice ripped edge. Your paper should be ripped. To be fair, that tutorial was like eight parts. So I am a proficient. This morning I did run out and get a few of the things I needed, including a giant thing of hod hodgepodge. Mod Podge. I went and got some newspapers. I don't know that I've ever bought a newspaper in my 28 years of life. Basically what we have to do is make the shape that we're going to paper mache on top of. Now take all of this with a grain of sand because I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> to take this trash bag, fill it up with paper. We're going to take some string, tie it around really tight to give that pumpkin groove effect. I'm sorry, editing Rachel, this must sound wonderful to your eardrums. Yeah. I don't think I did quite a good job getting rid of all the air in here. All right, all right, start a little bit of again. I'm gonna put that aside for now. And then we are gonna make about five trillion newspaper strips. <sighs> Eventually. Complete. Let's Mod Podge this bitch. The tutorial I watched, the guy had quite a concoction. Pretty sure you can do paper mache with just Mod Podge. And if you can't, we'll find that out now, won't we? If I can get this freaking open. Oh, smells like fourth grade art class. I'll dip dip and then paint it on here. Oh no. I think I'm supposed to water this down first. Oh God, oh God. I need an apron. We are learning from our mistakes. Personal growth. <laughs> I already got some hair in it. Good, good. Okay. This is gonna take forever. <sighs> that took forever. <laughs> this is her so far, bulbous. Not sure how long that's gonna take to dry. <laughs> 360 view here. I think it's quite pumpkin-y. I don't think the cracks quite came out as prominent as I would have liked. I wasn't sure how many layers to do, whoa. And honestly, I don't know how many I did. So it might be a little frail. So it is now four o'clock. That took four hours. Whew. To make today not just all about the head, I am going to start laying the pattern pieces of the bodice down on the fabric and then maybe cut those out and then I think I'll call it quits for today. So let's do that. So these are the main pieces of the bodice. Oh, that's okay. The front, the front side, the back side, and the back. And then the facings, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. This is a very curvy pattern and so I'm hoping that makes it pretty flattering. It looks like the buttons are right at the edges and there's little loop-de-loops. I don't particularly like those kind of buttons. Those kind of buttons and larger busts don't tend to work out too well and it can end in a lot of like gaping. So I don't even want to deal with that. Kind of like what I did for the Lizzie Bennet pattern. I'm just going to extend this out a little so that I can put actual buttons. Oh, and I also forgot <laughs> the sleeve. Day three. Boy, oh boy, do we have a lot to do today. Basically, we have got to get this lady all set and painted, but simultaneously I need to finish the bodice and the apron. Who decided that making a whole outfit was what I should do this week? Was it you? Hmm? 
I am going to go over some spots that are like very clearly paper mache. And this stuff, I'm gonna try to anyway. This is what I use to cover imperfections in my foam projects. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe it'll work with this too. And then I'm gonna go over and do some details with foam clay, like the stem. Maybe I'll accentuate some of the facial features. And then that has to dry. And then we can paint this, which is good because I'm getting tired of reading all these current events plastered all over her dome piece. Very depressing pumpkin. This area is gonna be the face because this little bulbous area right here kind of looks like a little cheek. So I honestly don't know what kind of face I can put on her that wouldn't be absolutely terrifying. This one doesn't look too scary. I think no matter what I do, she's gonna be just horrifying. I don't know that there's much I can do about that. So I'm gonna draw that on. Mm. Okay, my creation. I'm doing it, I'm doing yeah. it, yeah! That'll do, pig. Not great. Start filling in some of the gaps and the weird areas where it's like very obviously paper folds. I don't mind too much if the end result just looks like paper mache because in a way it could look kind of like an old timey costume and that's totally fine. I'm not trying to sell the realism that I actually have a pumpkin for a head. I do want this to kind of look whimsical and folksy and that it's old timey trick or treating costumes, so. Here she is. She's a little scary. She is gonna be drying for a little bit. I did put the foam clay on, a little stem. I went over the edges with that quick dry stuff just to make sure that there wasn't gonna be too many little bumps. Still think there will be, but. And um, yeah, she's very lumpy. Her eyes are different sizes. She's unique. So that's gonna be drying for a little bit. Once this is dry, I will probably sand it down a little bit to make it even more smooth, and then we can spray paint it. In the meantime, pin the bodice sections together and then start a sewing. Update time. This is what I have so far for the blouse and I will walk you through what I did because I kind of got in the zone. I did sew these sections of the bodice together and I folded these sections back a little because that's where I'm going to do the buttons and the buttonholes. I got started on the sleeves. More complicated than I thought it was going to be. So basically what it instructed me to do was make a bias tape along the edge of the sleeve. So I did that. I cut out two strips that I kind of just guessed knowing that I was going to have to fold in two of the sides, pinned it to the outside of the sleeve, turned it inside out, and sewed along the very edge to give enough space for the elastic. I used the elastic guide that came with the pattern, but I cut my elastic in half because I knew that it might be a little difficult to fit. So after that bias tape was sewn, it acted as a little channel for the elastic to go through. So I attached a paper clip to the end of the elastic, pulled it through the channel, making sure to try to spread it out as much as I can. So after that was done, I created the world's fastest little armbands. <laughs> the pattern called for more elastic at the bottom, but I don't really like how that looks in the photo, so I decided not to do that. Sewed a strip of fabric in half, turned it inside out, pinned it to the ends of the sleeves. And then when you turn everything inside out or right side in, it looks like this. I gotta say sleeve bands are probably the most confusing thing during any sewing project. And in fact, one of them I sewed 
incorrectly, but I had to take it off and redo it. Took the completed sleeve, attached it to the bodice, and here we are. Now I think I'm going to do the facing so that all these raw edges will be gone and do the buttons and the buttonholes. Although I might save those for tonight off camera just because they're not quite interesting to look at and I really want to move on to the apron and everything else I need to do today. The facing basically goes on the outside and I'm gonna sew it. When you turn it inside, it will get rid of that raw edge. And then that's, that's pretty much that. So I'm gonna do that quickly and then we can get started on the construction of the apron. Ooh, spooky. Wow. <laughs> Got him. Wait, what's the spell for Halloween time? I don't know. The sound is so satisfying. All right, back to business here. So to make the apron, I used that front skirt pattern, cut it out, and then I made a strap out of really long piece of fabric, making sure it was long enough to tie in the back. And then I sewed that for what seemed like forever. <laughs> And then I used that safety pin trick to turn it all inside out to hide the seams. And then I hand pleated the front of the apron to that waistband. I also hand pleated the shoulder ruffle using that guide from the pattern on the inside of the arm strap and then folded it in kind of like a taco. Then I sewed the straps to the waistband and tried it on. get to painting. I'm not gonna lie to you, she looks like a straight nightmare. I, much like Victor Frankenstein, have created a monster. <laughs> she looks like a straight pile of trash. Literally, she just looks like a garbage bag. We're gonna see what we can do with some paint. I can bring out some of the ridges that pumpkins have and that she looks more like a pumpkin and not hot garbage, but I'm not super hopeful. So what I plan to do is to go in with my airbrush with a darker brownie orange. And then from there, I'll go in with a lighter color, bring out the highlights, probably do a little bit of speckling. Just, we're gonna try to save this because it's horrid. <laughs> so, uh, oh, and very sticky. Okay, let's give it a shot, everybody. sort of hate it. <laughs> I think the concept could have been cool, but I just, I don't know. She's terrifying. Apparently my new neighbors like to spend every second outside, so I'm pretty sure I scarred the little girl that moved in. Hello darkness, my old friend. Oh my god, that's so scary. Hello Clarice. It is what it is. Not crazy about it. I did add a little bit of foam at the top. I didn't get that quite right, so it doesn't sit on my head very well and it just kind of flops everywhere. I don't uh, often voice my opinions too much on this channel, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. F*** your paper mache. 
When it comes to crafts, apparently I'm a control freak because paper mache for me was just a little too sloppy and hard to keep the shape. Obviously, it just looks like a giant trash bag. I'm sure there are things that I could have done differently, honestly. I don't think I'll ever do paper mache again in my life. So you can leave tips and tricks all you want, but <laughs> my opinion stands firm. I think the paint job slightly helped, but not on the face. Like I think that looks okay. But then the face is just like, oh my God. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. All around me are familiar faces. Another thing I hate, we'll just leave it like that. Mm. Another thing I hate is not being able to see. So that made everything 10 times more frustrating is trying to see out of these little, these little peepers. They look like a Halloween version of Toad. In the arms of the ages! <coughs> Outfit wise, it's not much better. The potential is there for this to be something I would wear. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> I think the shirt has a lot of potential to be one of my favorites. I just need to fix a few things first, like this. Literally so annoying. I don't think the elastic guide that the pattern gave me was quite right. So I need to go in and just make these a lot tighter, I think. Between the pumpkin head, trying to fix the sleeves, and then the apron sleeves also kept falling down. I was just a hot mess. Certified hot mess. The only thing I think I don't have any problems with is the skirt. I will definitely be wearing this a ton because it's super comfy. Sometimes all you can hope with a craft is that you get a couple good pictures and I feel like I got some decent ones. Go easy on me because I am fragile. I know she's so scary. <laughs> Happy October. Um, if you did want to follow along with Maxoween, 13 days of Maxoween, check out my Instagram. This is going to be the first day, but every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in October, I will be posting a new spooky costume or character or look. Some of those will end up being Friday videos on here. Most of them are just going to be photos. For people who don't have Instagram, I might also just post them on the community page in here, just in case, you know, you wanna see. Let me know what her name should be. I don't think horrible, grotesque monster is a great name for my creation, so. And that is it. I love you guys, whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, promise I make some cooler stuff than this. I upload every Friday. We have fun here. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Hmm, yeah, it's quiet. What are you thinking about? Don't look at me, don't look at me. <clears throat> she took a bunch of guard, 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 guard bags. Glug, glug, glug. <laughs> Muscles off. <clears throat> nope, not even close. I'm so sweaty. First, we are gonna just blah, blah, blah. I, Jack, the Pumpkin King. Hello darkness, my old friend. What's that Enya song? October got me like... Ow. I want the head to spin. Oh, that probably wasn't a good idea. Oops. Mm. Uh.